very uh, busy day and a busy week for you, Prime Minister. Appreciate your, your time uh, here today. Um, just wanted to say to you, of course, though, that you're not the only party leader in Manchester. Certainly you weren't um, yesterday. Were you surprised that Jeremy Corbyn turned up? Apparently that's a bit of a, a break in protocol. Well, I mean, it's a free country. He can go where he likes and say, where, say what he likes. And so, uh, you know, I'm not going to restrict his movements. I think what's more worrying is what he's saying, which is that he wants to put up taxes, which would wreck economic security. He wants to give up nuclear weapons, which would wreck our national security. So it's not a very uh, edifying message. But back here at the Conservative Conference, we're delivering the security, stability and opportunity that our country needs. What about the other things he's saying about austerity and tax credits and the 8,000 plus people who are saying it with him? Do you dismiss all they have to say on that front? No, not at all. Look, of course, people have a right to protest, but the argument I would make is, look, if you ignore a budget deficit, if you go on borrowing year after year, you end up not helping the poorest in your country, but hurting the poorest in your country. I mean, look at countries that have lost control of their finances. Take a country like Greece. It actually slashed, slashed its health budget by 14%. Now, because we've taken the long-term and difficult decisions to get our finances back uh, towards balance, we've actually been able to put £10 billion extra into our NHS. So taking these difficult decisions and realising uh, that living within your means, what I would call it rather than austerity, living within your means is the right thing to do, means you can help working people. But people on tax credits, that's not about living within your means. I know you say 8 out of 10 people will be better off, but 2 out of 10 are going to be a lot worse off. And I think it's just maybe the whole tone of things, maybe the way Jeremy Hunt's come out and talked about um, uh, yesterday, and how did he put it? He said, dignity is not just about how much money you've got. If you're earning it yourself, you're independent, and that's the first step towards self-respect. How do you tell that of, to the steel workers in Redcar, who didn't even get a mention in George Osborne's speech yesterday? Well, look, to the steel workers in Redcar, I, I would say we'll do everything we can to help you. We've already put £80 million on the table to try and help regenerate the area, to help give people training, to help those who want to start out on their own. If we look across the northeast, uh, we are seeing regeneration, a whole new industry. Train manufacturing has just opened with the Hitachi plant at Newton Aycliffe. You've got car manufacturing in the northeast going well, but there's more we need to do. Uh, that's what we've got to do, is, as the Chancellor was talking about yesterday, genuinely rebalance our economy. We've seen another two million people in work since I became Prime Minister, but there's more to be done. But Len McCluskey says, well, you, you say you see two million more in work. The tax credit cuts, he says, it's a uh, disgraceful insult to three million people claiming them. Could you just explain to people, Prime Minister, why you feel you have to cut that tax credit? Well, what we're doing is moving towards an economy where instead of low pay, high welfare and high taxes, we have higher pay, uh, lower taxes and lower welfare. So next year, the lowest paid people in our country, uh, those on minimum wage, because of the national living wage, they will get a £20 a week pay rise. And by the end of this parliament, the national living wage will be £9 an hour. Added to that, next year, you'll be able to earn £11,000 before you pay any income tax at all. Now, I accept we are combining those two measures with a reduction in welfare, not least because we need to get on top of our national finances, get our budget deficit down and have a welfare and public services in our country that we can afford for the long term. See, to me, that sounds like um, to make an omelette, you've got to crack a few eggs. Is that just unfortunate? You think in the long term, those people will be better off, but in the short term, there are going to be casualties and quite a lot of them. Well, if we take, for instance, a, a family with children where there's one member of the family on minimum wages, the effect of our changes to the national living wage, to taxes, uh, to welfare, will mean that that family is £2,400 a year better off. Now, I accept that different families will be affected differently, but the concept and the introduction of this higher wage economy, combined with lower taxes and reduced welfare, I think is fair for all. I think will deliver a stronger economy. I think will actually tackle some of the causes of poverty where we should be helping people to get jobs, earn decent money through those jobs and pay less in taxes. I think that will have uh, the good effect. And you would dismiss that that shows a contempt for people on low pay because that's the accusation that has been levelled towards Jeremy Hunt. 
Well, look, the, the first thing, what I'd say is the best way to help people on low pay is to put up their pay and cut their taxes. I think the old system, where what we did was we gave, we took away money in pe from people in taxes, gave it back to them in tax credits, created an expensive and unworkable merry-go-round, whereas what we have now is you earn more, you pay less in tax, and I think that makes for a, a fairer and a more efficient economy. As for what Jeremy Hunt said, I think he is being uh, widely misquoted, and that's why he himself went out again and said, let me be clear, what we're talking about is making sure Britain is one of the success stories in our world and making sure that we, we help people to, to get work and uh, provide for themselves and their families. But he did say we should work like the Chinese and, uh, and the Americans, prepared to work hard in the way that the Americans and the Chinese are prepared to work hard, which sort of um, implies that we don't at the minute. Well, as I say, he came out afterwards and made clear Brit British people do work very hard. We're one of the hardest working nations on earth. If you look at the percentage of our uh, people that are in work, it's at an all-time high in our history. We've got more women in work than at any time I in our history. And Jeremy Hunt has been absolutely clear about that. Uh, Theresa May. Uh, she says mass immigration forcing thousands of British people out of jobs and making it impossible to build a cohesive society. Do you agree? Yes, I agree with what Theresa May is saying, which is that, look, we are an open economy. We benefit from people coming to our country. We should be proud of the fact that we've built one of the most successful multi-ethnic, multi-racial societies anywhere on earth. And that's a source of great pride to us as, as Britons. But immigration works best if it's controlled immigration so we can make sure that school places and hospital beds and uh, communities can actually cope with the level of migration and I think in recent years the levels have been too high which is why we're committed to bring them down. Part of the problem has been that we've created more jobs than the rest of the European Union put together and I would say you know the flip side of immigration control is we need to make sure that we are providing the education and the training and the apprenticeship and the skills for our own people to do the jobs that our economy uh, mm -hmm. is creating. Uh, which links to another issue of today, which is this one of truancy. You know, we've got now increasingly uh, in some of the poorest parts of our country schools that are turning out great results, but we need to make sure our children are getting to those schools. And that's why I'm announcing today uh, that where your children persistently truant and you're fined, as is the current system, if those fines aren't paid, they should come out of your child benefit because as parents, we've all got a duty to get our children into yes. school because if they don't go to school, they'll get worse results, they'll have worse job prospects, that wrecks their life chances, yeah. and that's not the sort of society we should be building. Very fair point, and to use your own phrase, that links to another job, which is your own job um, there. Now, you stride out of your hotel. That's a great to, link, Eamon. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm learning from the master here. Um, basically, <laughs> I saw you striding out of your hotel today. You head off to conference there. You're a man who's got an appetite for this job. You have things to do. You, you, you've got a lot of unfinished business um, as well, which leads me to the point. You've got them all, you know, in this beauty contest of Jeremy Hunt and Nicky Morgan and Boris Johnson and Theresa May. Are you going to break their hearts in a few years' time? Because maybe, you know, will you definitely, <laughs> finally, utterly, are you going to call it a day or could you be tempted? No, no, I, I won't be tempted. Look, I'm, as far as I can see it, I am halfway through this job. I've got an immense passion for it. I leap out of bed every day feeling what an honour it is to serve this great country of ours. But there's so much for us to do. We've got a stronger economy now. Let's finish that work. Let's add to that a more secure country. And let's add to that a country where we build genuine social mobility so people can go from the bottom to the very top. I've got a huge passion for this job. I've also got a talented team uh, behind me and... Uh, uh, after I've uh, done the, the two terms, the 10 years, I'm sure there'll be many talented people who put their, their name forward. And I'm, frankly, I'm, I'm proud of them, uh, proud of the fact that, uh, you know, they're increasingly being noticed for being a talented bunch. OK. Um, if I had a tenor, who should have put it on PM? I'm not really a betting man. My okay. dad was, but I never really... Luckily, I never inherited the habit, okay. so... Uh, Very good. Look, uh, I know you've Someone lots... once got me at 33 to 1, so you, you never know. You, whoa, so you never know. You're not saying no. <laughs> never say never. No, no, right? I am saying no. Let, let, me, let me be clear. I was not saying put a bet on me. I will not be there. OK. I know you've <laughs> a lot clever. to do. Uh, thanks for your time today. Have a good thank rest you. of conference, Prime Minister. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks Thir a lot. 33 to 1, your money's wasted. He's saying, he's saying he's not, don't, don't do it. Thank you. <laughs>